How's it going guys? It's Joshua Lufemi and I have a special guest today. Rondell Sheridan here. Past couple of days, Josh and I have been discussing K-pop. We're both big fans and we've been discussing specifically how K-pop is going to influence the global market in a way in which you're not aware of. But first, if you're a video editor, I have this special offer that I want to give to you before we start. I am the only English speaking YouTube channel that's able to give you Envato Elements for free for the first month. It's taken me about a year of negotiations to get this deal for you. Envato Elements is a subscription service that gives you unlimited downloads for all the best stock footage, VFX packs, Premiere Pro and After Effects overlays, sound effects packs, royalty free music, and literally anything that you'd need as a video editor. Just by clicking on the link below, you'll automatically get your free first month. You'll see the coupon right at the very end after you finish signing up. Okay, let's get started. So last year in December, I actually made a video called Music Videos Are Changing. In essence, I talked about how music video budgets used to be massive in the West. I'm talking about in the 90s and the early 2000s. Then unfortunately, the digital music age hit and crushed the physical album sales market. On top of that, production equipment and software got more affordable and flooded the industry with a whole bunch of new content creators that could finally now afford to create. These amateur creators started to charge these amateur prices, which ended up driving budgets and prices down for everyone. Go outside. Big time forward. Yeah. Starboy there, so. Came into the game, no one replaced me. me love my We've energy. now, however, entered into a new age where the music industry is less of an audio visual industry but more of a visual audio industry, with visuals now taking the forefront and being more of a profitable asset. It's no longer the audio recording. With the rise of online video hosting platforms like YouTube, video has become more and more the preferred communication method of branding. The crazy exponential rise of the popularity of music videos in the last decade is a testament to this. Music videos have become these incredibly profitable view magnets on YouTube. In December, I mentioned an article by venture capitalist Andrew Chen who proclaimed that music videos are the new technology of scale. Mentioning that in 2012, it took size Gundam Style a full three years to get to 5 billion views. But in 2017, it took the crossover hit Despacito only one year to accomplish the same feat. Okay, so we get it. So how do these views turn into profits? Via in-video product placements and pre-mid post roll ads by large corporations that crave the exposure of such a captive audience and that have massive marketing budgets to shell out. Lastly, the demand for quality video content has gone up as well. Cheap looking music videos with flashy transitions, bad lighting, shot on an iPhone, etc. They just aren't going to kick it these days. They're definitely not going to win you an MTV award. People want music videos that resemble feature films with developed narratives, beautifully constructed set builds, innovative VFX, and world-class DPs. Hashtag Joe Labisi, one of the most expensive and sought after music video DPs in the industry right now. Quality video content just by default costs more money because a ritzy mansion in the 30 mile zone will always cost you around 10k plus for a day rental and it's always going to cost you around 1k minimum for a film permit within the city of los angeles via film la and on top of that there's no way getting around the couple of hundred bucks you're gonna have to pay for a daily production insurance fee and the cost list just continues to go on there's no other way to actually make the type of music videos that people want to see without spending a hunk of change these days so it's safe to assume that the budgets are going to continue to rise just because of pressure from the market. But then on top of it all, there's K-pop. When you think about K-pop, think about the American music industry, but think bigger YouTube watch numbers 
incredibly more loyal fan bases, and music video budgets that are literally through the roof. It's the continuous rise of K-pop that I predict will be the ultimate saving grace of music video production standards and budget sizes for the entire world. I say let's get on this. South Korea has one of the most fascinating and dominant music industries. Modern Korean pop music first came into existence in the early 90s, and since then, the Hallyu, also known as the Korean culture wave, has been gradually growing into a global craze. Vox's Aja Romano states, there are three things that make K-pop a visible, unique contributor to the realm of pop music. Exceptionally high quality performances, especially dancing, an extremely polished aesthetic, and an in-house method of studio production that churn out music hits the way assembly lines churn out cars. It's the opinion of many that Korean music videos are a lot of the time even more important than the music itself. In addition to the reasons discussed previously regarding the industry turning into a visual audio industry, Korean visuals are especially important because they're universally appealing and attract the international market and transcend the language barrier. Seung Won Mo of South Korean music video production powerhouse Digipetty Studios has stated, K-pop is moved towards global content seen by people who do not understand the lyrics. That's why visual devices like dance, design, fashion, and characters are just as important as the music. They also use themes that are very simple. Boy likes girl, girl doesn't like boy. It's all universal. So were there any other contributing factors that were responsible for the rise of K-pop? Yes. So the Korean government via the Ministry of Culture actually sets aside a certain amount of funds to bankroll the exporting of Korean culture throughout the world. This includes funding the K-pop industry. I believe the Korean government looks at this more like an investment because they've definitely been able to reap some great returns. The Korean government has definitely acknowledged benefits to the country's export sector as a result of the Korean wave. It was estimated in 2011 that there was a $100 million increase in the export of cultural products, resulting in $412 million increase in exports of the other consumer goods, including food, clothes, cosmetics, and IT products. And thus, it makes sense that the Korean government has subsidized certain endeavors in the K-pop industry, including music videos. So K-pop, it's a massive phenomenon. A lot of people have been hooked worldwide. So what are actually the numbers? I mean, there's so many to mention, but we're gonna just focus on a few. In 2014, size Gundam style actually exceeded YouTube's two billion view counter limit. This prompted YouTube to actually have to change its view counter to register more views over 2 billion, which is pretty crazy. Gundam Style would last another five years of being the most viewed video on YouTube. In 2019, BTS shattered the YouTube record for number of views within 24 hours with Boy With Love. It raked over 75 million views. And it was funny, BTS was actually beating out another K-pop group called Blackpink's recent 24 hour YouTube record, which attracted 57 million views for the video Kill This Love. Now that's a lot of views and that's a lot of dollars. This then brings us to Korea's self-funding music video budget loop. The loop looks like this. Korea's ridiculously high YouTube viewership attracts large companies to offer pricier and pricier ad placements. This allows for bigger and bigger music video budgets, which in turn allows for superior looking music videos. These innovative and incredible looking music videos further strengthens the specific K-pop group's image. And this therefore further increases fan size, loyalty, and engagement, increasing YouTube viewership, and then the cycle just continues again. So what kind of music video budgets are we talking about in the K-pop world? Well, the average K-pop video costs easily two to three times as much as the average major label Western music video. And the average major label Western music video costs between 50K and 150K. Most music videos sanctioned by South Korea's three major entertainment labels, YG, SM, or JYP, costs up to 500,000 US dollars. That's a lot. But 
way, there's even more of an explanation as to why the Korean pop industry is so well funded. Check this out. Remember the global digital revolution that happened that completely killed physical album sales in the West? Well, K-pop physical album sales took a significantly smaller hit and beginning in 2014 actually increased significantly, rising 57% when compared to the previous year. But why? This doesn't make sense. It's because a physical K-pop album is much more than just a CD in a case, but an entire package of goodies that make each album release an especially special event. Posters, photo cards, beautifully crafted band books are often included along with the CD in an incredibly designed outer case. Yes, it might be easier to buy music digitally, but it would result in missing out on this ingeniously crafted experience, which feeds the fan desire for a tangible connection with their idols via a physical as well as beautiful product that they can touch and feel and have as a memento. What else? K-pop tops the world in concert sales. BTS single-handedly beat Taylor Swift, U2, Beyonce, Jay-Z, Eminem, and Rihanna in 2019 with worldwide tour ticket sales. They grossed over 196 million and played to 1.6 million people across 42 shows. What else? K-pop takes advantage of extending its brand beyond its music sales and even tour ticket sales. Unlike other pop bands who might release a few hats or hoodies, K-pop bands sell every type of branded merch imaginable such as light sticks, cups, hair dyes, jackets, pens, stickers, postcards, portable batteries, card holders, puzzles, and they sell really well. All of these additional aspects of K-pop culture further assures companies that K-pop fans are ever growing in size, are loyal, and will actively engage with any marketing promotion associated with their beloved K-pop icons. Basically, the ROI, meaning return on investment, of a YouTube view from a K-pop fan is assumed to be significantly higher than the ROI of a YouTube view from, say, an American pop fan. So we understand how K-pop videos got to be on top as far as their generous budgets go. We're now going to talk about how these budgets are implemented to make some of the most impressive visuals that the music video industry has seen to date, and how this competition of production quality will even further assist the bringing up of music video budgets even further in the global industry. Let's talk about excellence. It's excellence that has truly made K-pop the phenomenon that it's become. Consider K-pop's mix of memorable melodies, crazy high production values, polished choreography, and the massive list of attractive South Korean performers who spend countless years in exhausting studio systems, learning to dance and sing in synchronized flawlessness. K-pop music videos are no different. I'd describe a K-pop video as an intricately designed collaboration of different processes that together make a final product that's far superior to most of its worldwide counterparts. <laughs> Now remember, I'm not making the argument for the superior nature of K-pop music necessarily. I mean, the music's great, but for the most part, I'm really talking about K-pop visuals. Remember, the argument's been made over and over again, that it's actually these visuals and not the actual music that has propelled K-pop to where it's become globally. K-pop music videos showcase excellence in so many different ways, but in this video, we're just gonna cover seven. Number one, forgive me if I get this name wrong, but Joe Biamjin, one of the dope music video directors at this music video production powerhouse called VM Project Architecture, stated that music videos should always start with one guiding principle, to render each idol irresistible. 
He said it's all about having the priority of bringing out each individual idol's image. This is often accomplished through digital makeup, where beauty is applied digitally to a person's face via VFX software. One method includes masks being tracked on an adjustment layer within After Effects on an artist's face. Different blur effects are then placed on those masks to smooth skin or to hide blemishes. Irresistibility is also accomplished through coordinated wardrobe styling to either match or contrast with the surrounding set design. And lastly, the effective use of lighting can play a huge role of how an artist is perceived on screen. Using techniques such as lighting faces with soft light to hide imperfections, intense backlighting and a dimmed key light to add a sense of mystique, or the use of dynamic lighting as a way of revealing an artist. Number two, a music video will usually be the most effective medium in championing a brand whether it be for the artist's personal overall brand or for the branding or vibe, you could say, of a specific album. It's important that the music video has a cohesive concept that aligns with that branding. Whether the video is dark, like G-Dragon's Coup d'etat, cute, like Girls' Generation's Lionheart, weird, like Top's Doom Dada, funny, like Psy's Gundam Style, or sexy, like Blackpink's Do 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 Do, you can see how all the set design, props, blocking, choreo, wardrobe, lighting, literally everything falls in line with accentuating the specific concept that's been mandated for the project. Number three, K-pop videos implement elaborate set design and art direction. One of the most impressive features that I've repeatedly seen in K-pop videos are their use of complex set builds and multiple locations within a single video. All music video directors know that these are some of the most expensive aspects of video production. Let's reference Blackpink's Whistle, Wavy V's Take Off, NCTU's Boss, NCTU's Don't Stop. Again, pretty much with most K-pop videos, you're gonna see five to 10 location changes. When most American big budget music videos try to limit locations to three or four at the very, very most. These constant changing of locations never leaves your eyes a moment to get bored and actually allows specific K-pop videos to actually throw the story away altogether and leave you with three minutes of visual eye candy that most likely has never been topped by an American video. But this is expensive. When a crew needs to repack equipment in one location or load out and travel to another location where they can unload and rebuild, AKA load in, it's referred to as a company move. Every company move in and of itself can eat up several crucial and pricey hours of a production day. Now I'm gonna get a little controversial for a little bit. We'll say pre-2014, K-pop fans repeatedly had issues and complained about a specific type of set design that they like to call the SM Box. SM Entertainment being one of the three South Korean entertainment labels and Box referring to an enclosed set design that consists of three constructed walls and an open space in the middle with the main artists and possibly backup dancers doing choreography to the song. Much like any sitcom or any of our soap opera sets here in the West. Prime example of this in Western videos would be Ariana Grande's Focus. And SM immediately changed stuff up dramatically and started shooting more videos out on location and incorporating more narrative B-roll. I will say though, as someone that grew up adoring the lavish $100,000 set builds of American music videos from the 90s and early 2000s, and who went through a time of legitimately being underwhelmed at some of the low budget shooting environments that resulted from lower US music video budgets, i.e. empty warehouses, I've always kind of adored K-pop's ability to shell out the funds to create these fairly impressive and sometimes pretty intricate box sets. Again, that's a topic to flesh out in another video. Number four. K-pop music often implements a linear shot design. Shooting a generic music video is often separated into two parts. First, shooting your performance shots. Then secondly, shooting the narrative B-roll. This allows for a pretty simple shooting schedule where you basically shoot the entire song through during every performance setup. Then in post, the editor has the easy job of cutting between performance setups. A normal US vid would only have around three or four performance setups, so it's expected that each setup is going to be seen many, many times throughout the course of the video. Narrative B-roll footage would then be placed on top of those performance setups. An interesting trend that I've seen with K-pop videos is the attempt to never show a single performance setup more than a couple of times. This requires far more performance setups than most Western vids. Songs, I imagine, aren't actually played all the way through during each take, but shot in short, meticulous, pre-planned segments. This allows really cool transitions to be planned in advance between shots, since the cuts between shots are less arbitrary, but obviously pre-planned. 
This is what people are talking about when they are saying that they are shooting for the edit. Check out some of these pre-planned transitions in Wavy Takeoff. First off, you see the location change transition utilizing the brightening motorcycle light. Then check out this camera push away transition between the parking garage set and the air hanger set. Then there's another camera push away transition between the parking garage and the bridge. Then another match cut transition again between the parking garage and the bridge. I'm going to talk more in depth about K-pop use of match cuts in a little bit. Number five, creative camera shot design. Check out this intentional camera movement and this excellent composition. The camera work in K-pop videos really take you along for a real ride. Some of this is accentuated in post, but a lot of these incredible sweeping shots are truly captured using massive robotic camera cranes, tireless operators running with steady cam setups, bolted in car mounts, crazy camera dollies and the like. Here are a few of my favorite shot types that I've seen. Dramatic pan ups, rotating push-ins, fast linear push-ins and pull-outs, sweeping slants, backward follow shots with beautiful framing elements, sweeping wide shots, choreo tracking where the camera movement mirrors the choreo, camera impact bumps where the camera jerks to accentuate a hard or sharp movement from the talent. I also love the use of high shutter speed, or in other words, a small shutter angle, to really cut that motion blur within the footage. This Saving Private Ryan look is really popular in K-pop because being able to see every frame is important since it accentuates movement. Number six, everything is brought together in the edit. I love the way K-pop videos are stitched together. I mean, you can just see the skill, the time, and the devotion. Let's talk about match cuts. They are heavily used to hide cuts in between shots. Match cuts just involve placing two similar shots up against each other. Speed ramps are used most of the time to slow down the tail end of shots to emphasize movement. I also enjoy how several videos seem to play around with having a dynamic aspect ratio by incorporating animated black bars to narrow or widen a shot. There's so much more as far as K-pop editing goes, it's impossible to do it all in one video. Number seven, choreo. Choreo is a given in most K-pop videos, and this isn't always the case in Western videos. Drawing from hip-hop, freestyle, and b-boying, K-pop choreography has come to the point where it's just as iconic as some of the songs themselves. Precision and synchronization are held up as core qualities of every routine, and choreographers and directors often need to work hand-in-hand -hand to ensure that the shot design and the choreography work hand-in-hand -hand to accentuate each other. So how does the culture of excellence in K-pop music video production, their large production budget size, and lastly their massive and loyal fan base affect the worldwide music video industry? I believe it actually creates a model for the rest of the world to follow. The entire world is connected. I mean, how many times are Western artists able to take seeing their one location, uncreative, raunchy, twerk-filled strip club music videos being overshadowed by half a million, 10 location, sleek, beautifully choreographed K-pop music videos before they change their game plan? Competition in business is real, and it doesn't stop at your country's border. Relevance is an ever-present battle that's fought in the entertainment industry, and there'll be a point where Western labels are forced to increase music video budgets in order to simply compete. Western labels will be able to sustain these increased music video budgets by finding ways to increase revenue coming in from the other end. They'll end up drawing from their K-pop counterparts in regard to building equally as supportive fan bases that spend on average $100 or $300 out of their monthly paycheck on merch, that pack 90k seat venues in every city on every tour, and that religiously view and share music videos on YouTube as soon as they're posted. It's a whole new world now where video content is now king, and where I believe global competition will end up being a positive force that promotes even better quality content that reaches even more people than ever before. Oh, that'll be my first day I'll be nowhere so afraid 
I disagree with the seemingly common consensus here in the West that music videos and music video budgets are on their way out. I confidently push back at that notion to tell you that we haven't seen nothing yet. As content creators, a lot of us in the world of music video productions, I think we have a lot to look forward to and our future's bright. Thanks so much for watching guys. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and remember, get your free month of elements in the link below. Make sure you watch my YouTube channel, Like a Man on Fire, keep moving, never stop. Thanks so much again guys for watching and remember to keep it chill.